What's up guys? It's yo boy Omni Sensei. Welcome to What If I Was Reborn in Naruto as Uchiha and Uzumaki Hybrid, Part 8. Like, share, and comment on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed. Also, remember to check out the original story, link in the description. With all that out of the way, enjoy. <laughs> There are only Chunins and Genins here. Rinjiro thought as they approached the perimeter. The three Chunins did not hesitate and headed towards the unsuspecting mercenary Genins and Chunins who were still confused by the chaos. With Renjiro, Hiro, and Sama bound to face hundreds of both Chunins and Genins, they had to come up with a strategy quickly. The plan boiled down to who could eliminate the most enemies in the shortest time, and that was Renjiro. Sama and Hiro would deal with the Chunins, who were at most a hundred, while Renjiro would handle the Genins. While Genins were easier targets, their numbers, more than thrice the number of Chunins, presented a significant challenge. However, Renjiro felt confident he could handle it. Since he was a better sensor than the other two, he could easily distinguish between the two shinobi ranks. Renjiro immediately spread out his chakra field while simultaneously activating his Sharingan. His chakra reserves were full, and he was in peak physical condition. Feeling good, he edged out Hiro and Sama, leaping into the air and landing nearest to the closest group of genins. He landed in the middle of seven genins who had barely recovered from the shock of witnessing their jounins disappear. Renjiro landed with force, which threw two genins off balance as he crouched to dodge a sword slash from one of them. He then jumped up, landing a kick to the chin of one genin, shattering his jaw while catching the hands of the two genins who were still in the air and flinging them into their comrades nearby. Renjiro then landed on the neck of the genin holding the sword, bringing him down before using his Sharingan to paralyze the three remaining genins. He then swiftly slit their throats with the sword of the genin pinned under his knee. One of the mercenary chunins managed to get a glimpse of Renjiro's eyes and immediately shouted, It's an Uchiha. Be careful. Do not look at his eyes. As if that will help, Renjiro mused upon hearing the warning. He didn't give it much thought and threw the sword in his hand at a chunin a few meters away. His throw was precise, and the sword lodged itself in the chunin's throat. Renjiro then moved to another group of genins. He dodged a punch and flung the attacking genin into his comrade while launching a couple of kicks at another genin. His Sharingan moved quickly around his Skara, tracking the movements of his enemies. Renjiro continued using his superior speed and reflexes, dispatching numerous genins as the seconds passed. The mercenary genins kept coming at him, thinking their numbers would aid them, but Renjiro kept on dispatching them efficiently not minding the number they attacked him with. Suddenly as Renjiro was fighting another group of genins, he jumped up, dodging an electric punch that erupted from the ground. It seemed that a genin wanted to use a sneak on him from the ground. While still in the air, he kicked two genins surrounding him and thought, two can play. He then punched the shinobi below him who was emerging from the ground. His punch was so strong that it forced the shinobi, whose only hands were out of the ground. Renjiro then infused lightning chakra into his hands, creating a less effective but powerful chidori, which he then launched at the genin. The genin had tried to dodge the attack but the ground he hoped to use to sneak an attack on Renjiro quickly became his prison. He was trapped and had no other option than to stay put as Renjiro's lightning chakra-infused punch drilled into his head. Nearby, Sama was engaged in a fierce duel with a particularly skilled Chunin. She moved with grace and speed, her wind jutsu slicing through the air with lethal precision. With a final, powerful strike, she sent the Chunin crashing to the ground before moving to the next. Hiro, on the other hand, was locked in a brutal exchange with two Chunins. Using his earth jutsu, he created barriers and pitfalls, disrupting their movements. He then used his taijutsu skills to incapacitate one of them, while the other fell into a deep pit hero had created moments before. Renjiro, having just dispatched another group of genins, paused for a brief moment to catch his breath. His sharingan flickered, and he sensed a powerful presence approaching. 
He turned to see a Chunin charging at him with a spear infused with lightning chakra. Renjiro smirked, anticipating the attack. As the Chunin lunged, Renjiro sidestepped and grabbed the spear, using the Chunin's momentum to flip him over and slam him into the ground before stabbing him with the same spear he held a few moments ago. A few meters from where Renjiro was fighting, Sama found herself surrounded by four skilled Chunins. The intensity of the battle made her acutely aware of the sweat dripping down her forehead and the strain in her muscles. Why is Renjiro taking so long? Sama thought, frustration creeping into her mind. She had been engaging stronger opponents, forcing her to expend more effort. As she dodged a punch from one of the Chunins, she countered with a swift kick to his abdomen, sending him staggering back. The Chunin circled her, their eyes narrowed with determination. Sama took a deep breath, her mind racing as she formulated her next move. One of the Chunins lunged at her with a kunai, aiming for her side. Sama swiftly sidestepped, grabbing his wrist and twisting it, forcing him to drop the weapon. She followed up with a knee to his stomach, knocking the wind out of him. Another Chunin took advantage of the distraction, charging at her with a flurry of punches. Sama blocked and parried, her movements fluid and precise. She landed a powerful elbow strike to his jaw, sending him reeling. The remaining two Chunins attacked simultaneously, coordinating their strikes. Sama ducked under a sweeping kick and spun around, using the momentum to deliver a roundhouse kick that connected with one of their heads, knocking him unconscious. The last Chunin hesitated, his confidence waning as he watched his comrades fall. Sama seized the opportunity, reaching into her pouch and pulling out a handful of senbons. With a flick of her wrist, she threw the needles at him. The Chunin instinctively raised his arms to shield himself, but Sama was already forming hand signs. Earth Pulse Jutsu, she exclaimed, slamming her hands into the ground. The earth beneath the Chunin's feet trembled violently before erupting in sharp, jagged spikes. The Senbons were a mere distraction, and the Chunin realized too late. The earth spikes impaled him and the other fallen Chunins around him, effectively ending the fight. Meanwhile, Hiro found himself surrounded by a group of Chunins. Despite the odds, he showed no signs of fear. His eyes narrowed in focus as he stomped the ground with immense force. Earthquake slam, he roared. The ground beneath the Chunins buckled and cracked, sending shockwaves that knocked them off their feet. Before they could recover, Hiro followed up with a series of hand signs. Earth spikes jutsu, he shouted, and sharp spikes of earth shot up from the ground, incapacitating the fallen enemies. Whoosh! A kunai suddenly flashed past both Sama and Hiro's faces, striking Chunins who were attempting to sneak up on them. The kunai detonated on impact, throwing the stabbed Chunins back. Sama and Hiro turned to see Renjiro, who gave them a nod. Sama quickly retrieved a huge scroll from her pouch and unfurled it, summoning hundreds of shurikens. Hiro made a few hand signs, and the number of shurikens doubled. Renjiro, having created six shadow clones, began to work, exhaling fire onto the shurikens to increase their destructive power. This was a supercharged version of Renjiro's Phoenix Sage Flower Nail Crimson Jutsu that they had been recently working on. Renjiro, his clones, and Hiro then moved to Sama's position, watching as the burning projectiles rained down on the mercenaries. The mercenaries tried their best to avoid the fiery barrage, but with nowhere to hide and the overwhelming number of projectiles, they quickly began to dwindle. Explosions and flames filled the battlefield, the air thick with smoke and the scent of burning debris. The mercenaries' cries of pain and panic echoed as they were overwhelmed by the relentless assault. After a few minutes, only a handful of the mercenaries remained, most of them Chunins. But before Renjiro could move to finish them off, he sensed malicious presences as two mercenaries suddenly appeared on either side, striking at both Hiro and Sama. Upon close look, both these mercenaries had black armbands on their arms. Just like his comrades, a mercenary suddenly appeared in front of Renjiro. They are Jounins. Why are they here? Renjiro immediately thought but soon realized that he didn't have much time to think as he had to act quickly. His mind raced, realizing that the three Jounins had caught him and his team unaware. Renjiro immediately channeled his chakra, and a thick chain with a golden tinge manifested from his abdomen. Controlling the chain with his mind, Renjiro used it to whisk his teammates, including himself, by wrapping the chain around them to avoid the attacks coming their way. 
In an instant, they flickered a couple of meters away from the danger. What just happened? Sama thought, feeling the tight grip of the chain holding her and Hiro in place next to Renjiro. She had been preparing herself to counter the sudden attack by the mercenary who was striking at her, but she was suddenly whisked away. Did he always have this ability? Sama wondered. This was her first time seeing the adamantine chains from Renjiro, as she had only seen similar chains before from Kushina. Up until a few minutes ago, she thought Kushina was the only one with such an ability. Instinctively, she turned to Hiro, hoping he might have some answers. Unfortunately for her, Hiro shared the same look of surprise that Sama had. It was clear that Hiro also did not know what was going on. Right now, Hiro was experiencing a cocktail of emotions. He was shocked by the sudden movement and the turn of events. He was thankful that Renjiro had helped him avoid the attack, but he was also a bit disappointed. Not at Renjiro for not trusting him enough to tell him about this ability, but because he realized that Renjiro was not going all out back when they sparred. He did not use this ability during our spar. Did he get it after? No, we immediately began our missions with Minato-sama, so he had this ability when we were sparring. So he was holding back. But even if he used it, could I have countered it? Hiro bitterly thought. Hiro was more prideful than he would like to admit, and realizing that his friend was holding back during their spar hit his pride hard. Thankfully the urgency in their current situation helped him take his mind off it. The truth was that after the incident with Fugaku and Daichi finding out about his first chakra Senu, Renjiro vowed to be more careful about his abilities. Renjiro knew that with the way his second chakra Senu was versatile, it would be hard to keep it a secret, so he would only use it as a last resort. Their current situation was one of those occasions, especially since they were going against three Jounins. Scratch that, Make it four, Renjiro thought as he saw another mercenary flicker next to the three Jounins who had been trying to kill them a few moments ago. Two Chunins against four Jounins was not exactly the ideal situation any of the Chunins would want to find themselves in. The odds were completely against them without a doubt. If this was the matchup from the beginning, then maybe the three Chunins might have stood a chance. But now, after fighting more than 300 Chunins and Jenins, their chances were as slim as ever. Renjiro knew that they were a bit exhausted, and their stamina waning. We need to buy more time, but how? Do I need to summon Uno? No, that would be wasting chakra that I really need. Renjiro thought as he reached into his pouch and retrieved a couple of pills. These were soldier pills that would enable a shinobi to quickly regenerate a part of their chakra. There was a limit to how many one could use in one sitting as well as how effective they could be. Renjiro had rarely used them because of his larger-than-average chakra reserves, but he knew that he had to use them this time. He had to go all out against the Jounins, especially if he had to use his adamantine chains, as they were the most chakra-intensive ability he had in his arsenal. Renjiro quickly swallowed two pills. The taste was more sour than he liked, but he quickly got over it as a warm feeling spread throughout his body. He then passed the pills to Sama and Hiro, who were both looking at him with surprise. Take them. We will need them to deal with these Jounins, Renjiro said, noticing that the two Chunins were a bit hesitant. Sama took one of the pills, what's the plan, she asked, her voice steady despite the uncertainty in her eyes. We need to do our best to buy time until Minato-sama or Yano-sama arrive, Hiro said, swallowing his own pill and feeling the surge of energy that followed. I will take the three on the left while you two deal with the one on the right," Renjiro instructed, his eyes fixed on the four Jounins to ensure they didn't make any sudden moves. But Renji, Sama began to protest, but was cut off by one of the mercenary Jounins. That is a unique ability you have there, boy, but you killed my subordinates, so it will be sad to see such an ability go to waste. The Jounin said, his tone cold and menacing. Is it done, Yasu? Ige. The Jounin who had just spoken, asked in his mind. Yasu, a squad member and their sensor, also had a special mental jutsu that could create a telepathic link, facilitating communication by connecting their minds. It was similar to the Yamanaka clan techniques, with the only difference being that Yasu had to place seals on the three squad members to create the link. Yes, but I cannot sense anyone apart from those three Chunins and the bodies around us, Yasu responded through their mental link. Ige was immediately alarmed by this. Just after their sneak attack against the Chunins failed, 
He had tasked Yasu with sensing if there were any chakra signatures around them, hoping to find other Jounins from their organization. What do you mean? Yamada asked, a note of anger in his voice. Are you saying that Murao-kasama and the rest just left the base? Dam don Yamada. If Yasu cannot sense them nearby, they must be dead or missing. Either way, those Konoha Chunins must know something about this, Norio added. Then so be it. Fan out. We only need one of the alive to tell us where Murao-kasama and the rest are. Ige remarked. With that said, the four mercenary Jounins disappeared and Ige appeared in front of Renjiro, his speed astonishing. Where is Muraoka? he demanded bending down to stare Renjiro in the eyes. He is fast. Renjiro couldn't help but think. Why should I tell you anything? Renjiro replied, his voice steady. I don't even know who Muraoka is. Renjiro thought. He was a bit confused by the question posed to him, but he knew he had to think of a strategy to survive this encounter. Because if you don't, you and your friends won't live to see another day, Ige said as his eyes narrowed. Do you think threats will work on us? Hiro interjected. He still held Sama and Hiro in place with his chains so he jumped back to create a distance between them and Ige. Out of the corner eye, Renjiro saw someone move and launch a couple of kunais with explosive tags on them. Knowing that he needed to dodge this, Renjiro immediately created another chain that propelled him and his two teammates to the sky. I like these ones, they actually think that they can put up a fight, Ige remarked despite his voice dripping with disdain. Renjiro made a hand sign and used the majestic destroyer flame, exhaling fire down at both Ige and Yasu, the kunoichi who launched the explosive tags at them. The jutsu brought them a few seconds in the air which was something Renjiro planned. When we land, I will let go of you guys and we will move as planned, Renjiro instructed. Now that I think about it, where did the rest dash, Renjiro could not complete the thought as suddenly, a piece of cloth on Kanai floated past them. What are they trying to do? Hiro said as another cloth floated near them. In no time, two more appeared and after a few seconds they exploded. Boom! The explosion was quite unexpected, but Renjiro acted in time creating a barrier from his adamantine chains that shielded the trio from the blast. The barrier was translucent and powerful enough to prevent the shockwave from affecting them. A distraction? Just what I needed, Renjiro thought as the three of them landed on the ground and separated, using the smoke from the explosion as cover. They had already come up with a plan earlier, the only thing left was to execute it. Amid all this, Renjiro sensed a new chakra field. This is a new chakra field, it definitely belongs to one of them since it is different from Sama's or Hiro's, he thought. Despite Hiro and Sama not being bona fide sensory shinobis, they still possess chakra fields since it was quite versatile. After spending a week with Sama doing missions and even longer with Hiro, Renjiro could instantly recognize their chakra fields. Where is it from? Renjiro wondered, trying to pinpoint the origin of this new chakra field. There. Renjiro flickered to the source he identified, spotting a red-haired Kunoichi with a black armband like the rest. Now that he got a closer look, Renjiro realized that instead of wearing the usual jumpsuit, she had on a black, tight dress that barely let her breathe. The dress was sleeveless with a high collar and waist-high slits. Despite his observations, Renjiro had other things on his mind. She must be their censor. I'm not sure if they have any more, but them losing one would surely benefit us. They are still alive somehow. Even one of them just appeared in front of me, Yasu said through their squad's mental link. She prepared to engage the red-haired Chunin in front of her, who had crouched, using his left hand to hold his right hand. While she found the posture strange, Yasu charged towards him holding a kunai, or at least she tried to. Yasu suddenly heard a high-pitched screeching noise, resembling that of a thousand birds chirping before she felt her legs giving in and began falling down. What is happening? She thought. It was only then that the pain from having her chest impaled registered in Yasu's brain. This is more messy than they depicted, Renjiro thought as he flicked his hand to get rid of Yasu's blood. We were outnumbered and severely outpowered, so I hope this helps our odds. Renjiro concluded. Having their mental link destroyed, the three Jounins were alarmed. They all turned their focus to where Yasu was, only to see the Chunins near her flicker his hand just as Yasu collapsed. Norio and Yamada, who were occupied with Hiro and Sama respectively, became more aggressive. 
An orange mist began emanating from the sword Norio was holding, a clear contrast from the water he was using in tandem with his sword attacks. Ige, who was the only one unoccupied, quickly dashed to where Renjiro was and threw a punch. Renjiro, anticipating the attack, sidestepped swiftly. Ige's punch missed its mark, and he immediately followed up with a series of rapid punches and kicks, aiming to break through Renjiro's defense. Renjiro dodged each strike, his body weaving and twisting to avoid contact. His eyes, sharp and calculating, observed Ige's patterns, waiting for an opening. He's too fast. Renjiro thought. Ige was the first person that Renjiro had trouble predicting their movements. He was fast probably the fastest shinobi he had matched up against, and Renjiro was trying to keep up. I need to be wary of his eyes, that's probably how he got Yasu, Ige thought. Come on, is dodging all you've got? Ige taunted, a hint of frustration creeping into his voice. Renjiro smirked but didn't respond. He needed to conserve his energy and keep Ige guessing. I am just a chunin, does he expect me to go blow for blow with him? Renjiro thought. As Ige launched a fire-style jutsu, Renjiro leapt into the air, narrowly avoiding the searing flames that erupted where he had stood moments before. Ige's hands then blurred through a series of hand signs. Lightning blade, he shouted, and his hand crackled with intense lightning chakra. He lunged at Renjiro, the electrified hand aimed at his chest. Renjiro's eyes widened. He had to think fast. At the last possible moment, he twisted his body, allowing the lightning blade to graze his shoulder. The pain was sharp, but it was a calculated risk. He used the momentum to flip backwards, creating some distance between them. Renjiro then exhaled a massive fireball towards Ige, hoping to buy some time. Ige deftly dodged to the side, the fireball exploding harmlessly behind him. Ige's patience was wearing thin. Enough games, he muttered. He then channeled chakra through his body as his muscles constricted. Lightning then began crackling all over his body. Renjiro knew he had to act quickly. He formed a series of hand seals and slammed his palm to the ground. A wall of earth erupted between him and Ige, giving him a moment's respite. Ige, enhanced by the lightning around his body, immediately burst through the earth wall, only to find Renjiro missing. Huh? Where did he go? Ige wondered. Sama stood eyeing the three shinobi in front of her. They were all completely similar as Yamada had created clones that she had been fighting for the last couple of minutes. Just as Sama was about to make another move, Renjiro suddenly appeared in front of her, gripping the air to her side. As he did so, Renjiro placed his hand on Sama and injected his chakra into her causing Yamada's real figure to be revealed to Sama. A Jinjutsu? When? Sama thought. Let me show you a real Jinjutsu, Renjiro said as his Sharingans dilated. You need to go and help Hiro, Renjiro then instructed the Kunoichi. Sama was reluctant at first since she considered Renjiro her junior, but she relented when she realized that without his help, she wouldn't even know she was caught in a Jinjutsu. She dashed to where Norio and Hiro were fighting. Ige arrived a few moments after Sama left and, as he spewed lightning bullets from his mouth toward Renjiro, he was surprised when Yamada created a clone who moved to protect Renjiro. The lightning bullets hit the clone, dispelling it, as Yamada charged at Ige. What are you doing, Yamada? Ige shouted at his comrade. This won't hold for long, Renjiro thought. While he had not gone on as many missions as he'd hoped, Renjiro's time in the force had been fruitful so far as he had time to better his Sharingan use, particularly his Jinjutsu. Tobe and Toda had advised him on ways he could improve his Jinjutsu skills, which helped him. He was now able to trap anyone below the Jounin rank in a Jinjutsu they would have a hard time breaking from. This was a far cry from the poor yet effective attempt he made at Riku, his Jounin sensei, near the end of his Jenin days. Currently, Renjiro did have some trouble using his Jinjutsu on Jounins, and the fact that Yamada was a Jinjutsu expert meant Renjiro knew he wouldn't be trapped in the Jinjutsu for long. Before Yamada could even make contact with Ige, Renjiro manifested another adamantine chain that headed directly towards Yamada and Ige. He knew that Ige would easily help his comrade break out of the Jinjutsu, so why would Renjiro let this opening his enemy gave him, by turning his back, go? The chain moved with lightning speed, aiming at both Jounins and creating an opening for Renjiro to launch a follow-up attack if it failed. 
Ige's eyes widened as he realized the chain's trajectory. Yamada, watch out, he shouted, but it was too late. The adamantine chain did not wrap around Yamada but instead stabbed into him. Ige managed to dodge just in time, but the distraction gave Renjiro the opportunity he needed. With a swift motion, Renjiro formed a Raisingan on his arm as he leapt towards Yamada. Boom! The ground sounded as Ige, anger still evident in his eyes, was alert and managed to flicker away and Renjiro's Raisingan only hit where Ige was a few moments ago. Renjiro landed on the ground, panting heavily. He had used a significant amount of chakra, but he had managed to take down one of their strongest opponents. Two down, two to go, he thought. Norio's eyes were burning with rage, his muscles tense and ready. He had witnessed Hiro's team slaughter two of his comrades, and now his only goal was to exact vengeance. Ra! With a roar, he lunged forward, swinging his greatsword which gleamed under the moonlight in a wide arc hero met him hidden, their blades clashing with a shower of sparks. The Hataki clan saber techniques had been drilled into Hiro relentlessly for the last couple of months, and today was Hiro's ultimate test. For a moment, the fight was evenly matched. Hiro's saber deflected Norio's powerful strikes with deft precision. He relied on his clan's techniques, using fluid movements to redirect the force of Norio's attacks. Each clash of metal sent vibrations up his arm, but Hiro stood firm, his eyes locked onto his opponents. Is this all you've got? Norio sneered. Hiro didn't respond, focusing on maintaining his defensive stance. Norio, however, was no ordinary mercenary. As the fight dragged on, he began to change his tactics. With a guttural growl, he swung his greatsword in a downward arc, and as it struck the ground, a wave of water erupted from the blade, surging towards Hiro. Caught off guard, Hiro leapt to the side, narrowly avoiding the deluge. The water attacks added a new dimension to the fight. Norio's slashes were now accompanied by torrents of water, making it harder for Hiro to anticipate and dodge. I can't use ninjutsu as much as I want in this situation since I am running low on chakra. I just need to hope I beat him with my saber. Hiro thought as he kept his focus, parrying and dodging as best he could. Then, Norio began to release an ominous orange fume from his greatsword. The air around them grew thick with the toxic vapor, and Hiro became alarmed. What is this, he wondered. Hiro had heard of the Iron Fang's notorious poison techniques, but he had never faced them firsthand. The fumes swirled around Hiro, clinging to his clothes and skin, seeping into his pores. Norio grinned as he spoke. You know, I did not come from a shinobi background, but my clan still dealt with poison back in the land of water, and this is one of them. It is a deadly poison that uses your chakra to sustain itself. You'll find your strength waning, your body betraying you. There's no escape. Immediately, Hiro felt a strange sensation in his chakra network. The poison was insidious, it was as if his own chakra was being turned against him. He staggered, his vision blurring, and Norio seized the opportunity, swinging his greatsword with deadly intent. Fortunately, Hiro barely managed to deflect the blow. Just when things seemed dire, Sama appeared at Hiro's side. With a swift motion, she placed her hands on Hiro, her chakra glowing with a soft green light. Healing energy flowed into him, temporarily mitigating the effects of the poison. Hang in there, Sama said. Norio's grin widened as he saw this. You think you can defeat me, he taunted. You killed my comrades. Now, you'll die a slow, painful death. They tried to kill us first. Hiro wanted to complain but due to their current situation, he chose to keep it to himself. Sama hurled a barrage of kunai at Norio, forcing him to dodge and giving Hiro a moment to recover. Hiro gathered the last of his strength and launched himself at Norio. This time, Hiro's attacks were more precise, more deliberate. He aimed for Norio's weak points, using his speed and agility to keep the mercenary off balance. Sama supported him from the sidelines, her weapons creating openings for Hiro to exploit. But the poison continued to sap their strength, and Norio's fury only seemed to grow. Norio swung his greatsword in a wide arc, releasing a massive wave of water infused with the orange fumes. Hiro and Sama were forced to separate, dodging in opposite directions. He's the most dangerous out of the two, Norio thought. He then pursued Hiro, his attacks becoming more aggressive. Sama, realizing the dire situation, decided to take a risk. 
She formed a series of hand seals, her chakra flaring brightly, Swaitun, Suryudan no Jutsu, she shouted, summoning a powerful water dragon. The dragon roared to life, crashing towards Norio with immense force. Norio was momentarily distracted, giving Hiro a crucial opening. I still haven't completely mastered this, but there's no point in not using it if I die here, Hiro thought, focusing his chakra on a final, decisive strike. Raijin no Mai, he cried, his saber crackling with lightning chakra. He dashed forward, his blade a blur of motion. Norio turned just in time to see the attack, but it was too late. Hiro's saber struck true, slicing at Norio's chest and delivering a powerful shock. Norio staggered, his eyes wide with disbelief. This, can't be. He muttered, collapsing to the ground. After confirming that Norio was dead, Sama rushed to Hiro's side, her healing chakra flowing into him, mending his wounds and purging the remaining poison from his system. We need to be in better shape before helping Renjiro, Sama thought as echoes of explosions could be heard from a distance. This is annoying. Renjiro thought. He had been trading attacks as well as dodging and trying his best to get away from Ige, but the Jounin was much faster than him. Nothing is working. I need to find a way to make my Jinjutsu work even when people are wary of me, Renjiro thought. Only his stamina was keeping him alive as he kept healing from all the attacks from Ige that hit him. A particularly fierce lightning attack had sent Renjiro skidding across the ground, his body convulsing from the electric shock. Arg! The sound of the lightning attack crackling in the air was almost drowned out by Renjiro's pained grunt. His clothes were singed, and his skin was covered in burns that slowly began to heal, thanks to his chakra. The healing was great, but it could not remedy the pain his injuries brought. Just as Renjiro was about to flicker away, Ige appeared behind him, catching him by the neck. Got you. Ige sneered, tightening his grip. Just then, Renjiro's shadow clone appeared, throwing a couple of explosive tags at Ige. Boom! Immediately, another explosion rocked the area where the two were. The force of the blast sent debris flying, and Renjiro used the explosion to free himself from Ige's grip and flickered away. This should buy me a few seconds. Renjiro thought as he made seven shadow clones that dispersed in different directions. He waited for a few seconds as the burns he had all over his arms and face began to heal. It was a bit slower than normal since Renjiro was running low on chakra but still effective. Renjiro Kamikaze has a nice ring to it, Renjiro couldn't help but think. This was the strategy he had been employing for the last couple of minutes. Renjiro was way too low on chakra to use his adamantine chains again, so he chose to empty out his explosive tag stock on Ige. He was confident in taking the brunt of the blast or, worse, healing from it. He also used his shadow clones in various capacities, such as confusing Ige about where he was, as well as carriers of the explosive tags. Ige then appeared in front of Renjiro, grabbing him again. Just as another shadow clone appeared once more, Ige used his other free arm to dispel the clone. That won't work again, Ige said, increasing the amount of lightning gathering on his arms. The electricity coursed through Renjiro's body, causing him to convulse violently. I can't even use any jutsu. Renjiro thought, he was almost about to pass out from the lack of air and the shock going through his body when suddenly a figure appeared, hitting Ige on the side of his abdomen, causing him to let go of Renjiro. All Renjiro heard was, let me handle this, before the figure and Ige disappeared in a blur of motion. Renjiro, still dealing with the aftereffects of being shocked, took a few moments to realize what had just happened. Panting heavily, Renjiro looked around, trying to gather his bearings. His vision was still a bit blurry from the electric shock, but he managed to focus on the figure who had saved him. It seems like they are done, Renjiro murmured, relief washing over him. When Minato and Yano parted ways right before the former entered the Iron Fangs base, Yano dashed towards a clearing a few meters from the base. I need to work fast, Yano thought, retrieving a seal from his pouch. He placed it on the ground before him and made a hand sign. Without uttering a word, the ground in front of Yano caved in, forming a deep pit the size of a football pitch in both width and length, just as Yano wanted. He then retrieved a couple of seals from his pouch and, using three E-rank wind release jutsu simultaneously, wind levitation jutsu to raise the seals from his hands into the air, 
wind retrieving jutsu to create wind currents that would propel the seals away from him, and finally projectile control to place the seals in various locations within the deep pit. Yano made another hand sign to activate the seals in the pit and once they were active, he muttered, looks like everything is fine. Now we wait. Yano then maintained the same hand sign, putting his clenched fists over each other with his index and middle fingers raised. This was his way to ensure that the seals in the pit were as efficient as possible. Using the same three jutsus that he had used on the seals, Yano retrieved two kunai from his pouch and placed one at the center of the pit where the seal that caused the caving in was and the other one next to him. This was to alert Minato that he had completed his part of the job. Minato, who had just entered the base, was dodging attacks left, right, and center. When he felt two tugs pulling at his chakra, a smile immediately formed on his lips as he flickered to the nearest jounin he could find and immediately teleported him to the pit in front of Yano. While the jounin was still disoriented from the teleportation, Minato left and headed back to the base. After Minato left, the jounin finally regained his bearings. When he saw Yano standing there without making any movements, the jounin tried to charge towards him and attack. He must be working with the person who brought me here, the Jounin concluded before his eyes widened. I can't move. I can't even use my chakra. The shinobi was shocked at what was happening. Just as the shinobi was coming to terms with this, another Jounin, his comrade, was brought by Minato. For that brief moment, he could move, but after Minato left, he was back to being paralyzed and losing connection to his chakra. This was a move Yano had devised after working together ever since he and Minato were Chunin. Minato had been the one who invented this after being introduced to Fuin Jutsu by Jiraiya, and when he mastered the flying Raijin Jutsu, the need for such a move decreased, forcing Yano to take it up and master it. Yano had never bothered to learn Fuin Jutsu since it never spoke to him as it did to Minato, but he was a fast learner nevertheless. Once Yano mastered using all the seals in tandem, he and Minato used this move whenever they needed to separate or isolate their targets and kill them. The seals he used were modified as they paralyzed anyone in the vicinity of the seal field Yano had created while also severing their connection to their chakra. Whenever Minato would bring a new target, Yano had to deactivate all the seals and reactivate them immediately after Minato left. Before, the drawback bothered Yano, and that's why he decided to always use the seals in a deep pit. While the few seconds that the seals would be deactivated were too long to give to their enemies, Minato worked fast, using seconds to enter the seal field and leave. Additionally, traversing the pit was harder to do in such a short time. They never encountered a shinobi who could do so, and Yano was praying that they never did for as long as possible because such a shinobi would be out of his league. Minato kept teleporting Jounin into the seal field, and it only took barely a minute for a significant number of them to be teleported. Finally, Minato managed to bring in the last two. Muraoka felt a disorienting pull and a rush of air as the world blurred around him. When his vision cleared, he found himself in a different part outside of their base, standing beside Azuma, who looked equally bewildered. Where are we? Muraoka wondered. As Minato left the last two there, he teleported right next to Yano, who asked him, are there any more? No, Minato shook his head before continuing, but they are fewer than what the intel said. I only managed to find 43 of them instead of 50. Yano, still in the same position, took a moment to think before saying, the other seven might be on a mission somewhere. Still, with them, we have a majority of the group's strength. Minato nodded as Yano passed control of the seal field to Minato, preparing to finish off their paralyzed targets. Yano took a breath as he made some hand signs, then after channeling chakra into his hands, he shouted, Futon, Yuzu no Senmetsu, as he clapped his hands together at the paralyzed shinobi in the pit. The jutsu Yano used, wind release, vortex annihilation, was a high-level, devastating wind-based jutsu that created a colossal, spiraling vortex composed of razor-sharp wind blades. This powerful jutsu could draw in objects, people, and even attacks within its reach, grinding them up with the intense, slicing winds and leaving a path of total destruction. Yano's clap produced a shockwave as the air around him began to stir violently, shaping into a spiraling vortex. Yano kept on infusing more of his chakra into the vortex, increasing its pull before releasing the vortex towards the paralyzed Jounins. 
The spiraling wind quickly expanded, pulling the mercenaries towards its center. The intense, slicing winds of the vortex ground and sliced them to death, reducing them to nothing in seconds. The vortex even destroyed the walls of the pit, spreading to the surrounding area due to its destructive power. The Jounans were not able to use chakra to enhance their bodies or form any other type of defense. Their chances of making it out alive were over once they entered Yano's seal field, frankly speaking, if Minato decided to take a more proactive role, it would be over before it even started. Yano panted as he looked at the destruction wrought by his jutsu. No matter how many times he used this jutsu, it still took most of his chakra and stamina. Out of the corner of his eye, Yano could see a snaking object far in the sky. Wait, are those Lady Kushina's chains? They look different. No, it can't be. I am probably seeing things, Yano shrugged as he turned to Minato. Seeing Yano turn to him, Minato recognized the fatigue on his face and told Yano, I need to go and help Sama and the rest. Can you store the bodies? Minato paused sparing a glance at the destruction before continuing, or whatever is left of them. Yano did not say anything and just nodded before Minato disappeared. He had not moved when Minato suddenly reappeared with another shinobi. As the mercenary tried to charge at Minato, Yano created a vacuum bullet that he shot at the mercenary, drilling it into his skull. At least we'll have a full body intact, Yano thought. Minato made a shadow clone, and as soon as it appeared, he instructed it to help Yano deal with the bodies. With that sorted, Minato went back to the base to find the tired Chunin's, Renjiro was trying his best to regain most of his chakra while Sama and Hiro tended to their wounds from the battle with Norio. What happened? Because I made sure Yano and I dealt with the Jounins, Minato asked after appearing in front of Renjiro. Seeing that Minato had arrived, Hiro and Sama joined them as fast as their bodies could manage. Renjiro responded. We actually managed to get rid of the Chunin and Jenin faster than we expected, and as we were about to store their bodies and wait for you guys, they suddenly appeared and attacked us. He exhaled deeply, his fatigue evident. So they arrived later after we began our attack? Was it a coincidence or was it planned? Minato wondered before asking, besides the one I found Renjiro fighting, were there any others? They were a squad of four Jonin. It seemed that they had just come from a mission elsewhere, Hiro managed to answer. So they were part of the seven unaccounted for? This means that three of them are somewhere out there. This wasn't what we expected. For all we know, our information might not be as accurate as we thought, and there might be more Jounins out there since we expected all of them to be in the base tonight. Minato's mind raced with these thoughts as Yano finally appeared. Minato did not hesitate and quickly brought him up to speed with the current situation. So what happened with the other three Jounins? Yano asked. They are dead, we managed to kill the other three, Sama said, surprising both Minato and Yano, especially the latter, whose eyes widened in shock. How? Yano couldn't help but ask. He was aware that a squad of four Jounins had gone against three Chunins. While they were in the same squad, the fact that the Chunins had zero casualties and came out on top of the exchange surprised him. Renjiro sighed, sensing the need for an explanation. I knew informing them about this would be a hassle, he thought before saying, I managed to kill one of them when I caught her unaware, and I used Jinjutsu on another one before killing him. Hiro and Sama took down the fourth one. He tried to be as vague as possible while also making it realistic. He managed to kill two Jounins? Granted that they are not up to Kanoha's level, that is still a huge feat has he been holding back this whole time. Yano wondered as he processed the information Renjiro had just dropped on them. Minato shared similar sentiments, thinking, already? It looks like he is stronger than I anticipated. That is good to hear, Renjiro. I did not know that your Jinjutsu was that powerful, Minato said, glancing at the red-headed Chunin. Renjiro did not respond and instead just smiled nervously, thinking, at least I did not need to say more. It's not that I don't want to tell Minato about the chains, I'm sure he probably knows since I find it hard to believe Kushina would not inform him. What I am worried about is Yano. Besides his clan head being Danzo, I just keep getting this weird vibe that he is hiding something or maybe I am just paranoid for no reason. No, it wasn't his Genjutsu. Renjiro manifested these large chains that he used to kill both Jonin, Hiro said, receiving a cursed look from Renjiro that surprised him. I spoke too soon. 
I just had to go and jinx myself, Rinjiro thought bitterly. Chains? What chains? Minato inquired as both he and Yano stared intently at Renjiro, curious about his response. Yes, it is my chakra Senu, just like Kushin Asama, although it is a bit chakra intensive. I am sure she already told you, Renjiro said glancing at Minato and emphasizing the chain's chakra consumption. Why would she tell me? Minato asked, feigning ignorance. Is he really going to make me say it? Renjiro thought before asking with a dumbfounded look on his face, aren't you too close? Or am I mistaken? Minato's face paled for a moment before a faint blush appeared on his cheeks as he said, we are all shinobi, Renjiro. We take up a lot of sensitive missions, so we do not tell each other everything, especially because we are just friends. Minato rushed through the last part, which did not go unnoticed by everyone present, but they did not bother pursuing it because they knew Minato would try his best to downplay it. Sure, like we believe that. Renjiro scoffed inwardly. Ah, at least now I know. Thanks, Minato-sama, for the clarification, Renjiro smiled as he said, while Yano was deep in thought. A Sharingan and the Adamantin chains. It's like the boy was born to tame the Ninetales. I wonder what will happen when this information reaches the clan head, Yano mused quietly, lost in his contemplation. Minato, attempting to shift the focus back to their mission, spoke up, we need to be sure we haven't missed anything. Sama, tending to a cut on her arm, nodded. Agreed. We should sweep the area thoroughly before we consider this mission complete. The five shinobi then decided to loot the base of the Iron Fong mercenaries, taking whatever valuables they could find. Remember, if you come across any valuable resources, scrolls with recorded information, be sure to store them well, Minato instructed. Minato's squad was lucky that their confrontation with the mercenaries was contained as it was only destroyed in the entrance where Minato and the Chunins exchanged attacks with the mercenaries. So when they further went into the base, all the resources belonging to the group were left intact, making it easy for the shinobi to collect and store them. Scrolls, precious metals, soldier pills, weapons, you name it, all of it was collected by the team and stored since they would greatly help the village. As they were rummaging through the base, Renjiro came across a stack of scrolls. At first, he could not understand them, deeming them useless, when he suddenly realized that they were seals. What? I can't understand them now, but I'm sure this would help better my Fuinjutsu skills," Renjiro thought as he stored the stack of papers in his personal storage seal, which fortunately for him, no one noticed. After ransacking the base, the squad did not linger there for long and they left since dawn was approaching. Later that morning, three Jonans would come back from their missions to an empty and quite vandalized base. What the hell happened here, one of the Jonans would think in anger. Looks like someone hit the base hard, another Jounin said, surveying the damage. The others must have been taken out. Check for any survivors or clues about who did this, the third Jounin commanded. We need to report back to that person. As the Jounins began their search, Minato and his squad were already miles away, heading to their next mission. They had just under a week to complete all the missions Minato had taken. The squad only rested for a few hours to regain their chakra and cool off from the fatigue before they moved to their next A-rank mission. Funny enough, their second A-rank mission also involved dealing with a mercenary group, but with a little more nuance than the previous one. The squad's target for this mission was Silent Blade, Iron Fong's biggest competitor in No Man's Land. While the squad was not tasked with annihilating the Silent Blade as they did with the Iron Fangs, they were tasked with infiltrating the group and seizing control from within. The moment Renjiro heard of the mission's objective, he was almost shocked to his core. Not because of the mission objective but because he could clearly understand the intent behind the mission. I always thought that Danzo was ruthless, but being here is making me realize that Hiruzen is almost the same, if not more ruthless, Renjiro thought observing the strategy in play. Instead of just supporting the Silent Blade and hoping that when either IWA or Suna use mercenaries, they use Silent Blade so that we can sabotage them, Hiruzen limited their options so that they have to use Silent Blade. This isn't even a case of chess or checkers, Hiruzen just flipped the board the game was played on. And he did all this with a squad of five shinobi. Renjiro couldn't help but think, marveling at the display of strategic prowess. 
At this rate, it would take a lot of years for this region to stabilize if we succeed in this mission, Renjiro concluded as Hiro asked how they were going to complete the mission. Minato replied, this is going to be much easier but also harder than the previous mission. It's going to be easier because we will need to target only three or four mercenaries in the upper echelon of the organization. And why would it be harder? Sama asked. It will be harder because we have to do this without being noticed. The only issue with that is that we might come across spies from either IWA or Suna who I am sure are in the group. We did not come across them in the Iron Fong because we dealt with them too quickly for them to foil our plans, Minato said. Ha, huh, that is actually smart of them, Renjiro thought before asking, but how are we going to ensure that our targets remain under our control? Yano immediately said, just leave that to me. Renjiro did not ask any more questions, and they spent the rest of the day studying the Silent Blade mercenary group and identifying their targets. By the time night fell, the squad made their move. They were under a time constraint since they had to move before news of the Iron Fong spread. At this point, the Jounans who found their base empty and nearly ruined had not spread the information since they were still investigating the cause behind the attack which worked in Minato's and the squad's favor. Fortunately for the squad, they silently managed to abduct their targets, with Minato teleporting them out of the base. Immediately after they secured the four mercenaries, Yano got to work. He placed a seal on them before Minato teleported them back to the base as if nothing happened. They did not come across any spies from IWA or Suna, much to Minato and Renjiro's disappointment since the two wanted to come across the spies so that they could eliminate them, but it seemed that they were not fated to. When Renjiro saw Yano get to work, he thought, surprise. A Shimura knowing Juinjutsu. I kinda thought that it would be some kind of big reveal. But aren't they basically doing what IWA and Suna are doing by having their people in the group? Renjiro thought sarcastically before concluding, I guess adding a little bit of chaos in the chaotic mess that is the leadership of Silent Blade will help since now Konoha, IWA, and Suna will be fighting for control of the group. And that's how the squad completed their third A-rank mission. Their next mission also involved them sabotaging another village, much like the majority of the actions in their previous three missions. They had to create distrust between Amigekur and its allies by planting false evidence of betrayal since Kanoha felt threatened by Hanzo's control in the country, especially after the last, second, Shinobi War. To achieve this, the squad had to rely on information gathered by their spies in the region. Their plan was to infiltrate the village, plant falsified documents, and create a scene that would make it look like Hanzo was plotting against his own allies. They moved under the cover of night, using their skills to avoid detection. Minato's teleportation jutsu proved invaluable as they slipped in and out of secured locations without a sound. Renjiro used his Sharingan to memorize the layout of key buildings, while Hiro and Sama planted the falsified documents in strategic places. Everything is set, Hiro whispered after planting the last document. Good, let's get out of here, Minato ordered as the squad left the area. The squad's last three missions were different from the others, focusing on rescuing two high-ranking defectors from both the Land of Water and Lightning. Outwardly, that was what it looked like, but the squad was just rescuing two of their spies that they had planted in the capitals of both countries. The only issue was that they had to travel quite a long distance to rescue the two spies. They were still close to Amigekur, which was to the west of the Land of Fire, while one of the two spies who needed to be rescued was close to Kumo, which was to the northwest of Kanoha, and the other was in a port town close to Kiri, which was to Kanoha's east. The squad took a whole day traveling to the borders of the Land of Lightning to save their spy, even with Minato teleporting them intermittently. Minato did this to save some of his chakra in case of an emergency. The detail that was transporting the said spy was not too powerful, which made things easier for Minato and the rest. They saved the spy but immediately parted ways as Yano and Minato exchanged information with them before informing them that they were reassigned to another location. A similar thing happened with the other spy who was in a port town close to Kirigikur. Seeing this happen, Renjiro thought, I wonder what mission rank these long-standing infiltration missions these spies undertake are. After not coming up with a logical answer, Renjiro decided to focus on their last mission, which involved the squad getting some scrolls containing sensitive information from a port town neighboring Kirigikur. 
The squad was not informed of what the scrolls contained, but Renjiro suspected that Minato or Yano knew what it was. Anyway, not my problem, Renjiro thought as the squad completed the mission and secured the scrolls. We completed our mission faster than I expected, Minato said to the group once they possessed the scrolls. The good thing was that the port town was close to the land of fire, so the squad only took hours to get back to Kanoha much to everyone's relief. It was a cold morning when Minato and the squad, having completed their last mission the night before, began their journey back to the village. Most of the squad members were a bit fatigued save for Renjiro and Minato. Renjiro had his chakra senu to thank while Minato just had high stamina. At this point, I'm not sure who between the two of us has Uzumaki ancestry, Renjiro thought bitterly. Despite not being physically tired, he was mentally fatigued, which sadly was not remedied by his chakra senu, which enhanced his regeneration. Why does my enhanced regeneration not apply to my mind? If it did, things would be too easy for me. Is there a way I can improve it? Or should I work on creating another one? No, that seems like too much work. I should probably look for ways to improve it with Fuenjutsu or even Juenjutsu. I was planning on learning Juenjutsu when I get time, so that would be better. Preferably the best time to do so will be after my time in the force is over since I'll have to find test subjects, which could only be bandits. I also need to ask Kushina about any mental jutsu that I could learn. Renjiro thought as the squad made its way to the mission center, the village was still quiet save for a few merchants who had begun setting up their shops for the day. U, Minato, Ando, the attendant at the mission center, immediately began when she saw the blonde Jounin and the four shinobi following behind him. I was not expecting you so soon. Minato gave her a warm smile and said, we were just lucky to complete our missions earlier than expected. Luck? Really? Renjiro thought. Normally, Minato did not take this many missions in one sitting. It was only because he was going to take some genins under his wings that he decided to appease his thrill for missions, so it was understandable how surprised Ando was to see him there. The thought of something going wrong during one of the missions, forcing them to come back to the village, did not even cross Ando's mind since she had witnessed Minato's prowess firsthand. When he took all those missions, I did not expect him to come back soon. Even with a the squad, they must have had minimal breaks in between the missions, Ando's mind veered in thought as she went ahead to process the mission payments. The squad waited in silence as Ando did her work. Here's your payment, Ando said, as she passed a storage seal to Minato. Normally she would have used a pouch, but considering the amount, storage seals would suit the task. Thank you, Ando, Minato said as he took the storage seal. You're welcome, Minato, Ando replied as Minato moved a couple of steps from Ando and returned to his squad. He was about to split the earnings then and there, and everyone knew this, so they were very expectant, especially Hiro and Renjiro. I wonder how much it will be, Renjiro thought as Minato began. For the B-rank missions, the total pay is just 3 million Rio considering we were unable to complete some missions and some missions paid less than the 300,000 cap. That's more than half a million per person. That's like three times the amount I get per month selling my seals. Maybe I should consider taking more missions, Renjiro thought as he heard Minato inform them of their payment, but Minato was not done. For the A-rank missions, apart from the one involving saving the officials and retrieving the documents, each paid a million Rio while those three paid 800,000 Rio, bringing their total to close to 6.5 million Rio and the total of all missions to 9.5 million Rio. As promised earlier, we will all receive equal shares for the missions. He really meant it, we will all have an equal share. I need to ensure I always get called up for more missions, Hiro thought since he did not believe Minato when he said that everyone would get an equal share since Jounins usually get more of the payments than Chunins. This is close to 2 million per person. And I earned all that in 2 weeks? That is 10 times what I earn per month. Maybe I should just resign from the force and leave the clan, right? Earning that amount of money even if it is twice or thrice per month would be a more comfortable life, just like Hiro, Renjiro was digesting the news. It was not like it was a large sum that he couldn't afford, since he had his seal selling business, but it was the largest sum Renjiro had ever gotten from the mission. Now that everyone has their share, I'd like to thank all of you for helping me out with the missions, Minato began, and Renjiro thought, did he really need our help? 
Minato continued, since I'll soon become a Jounin sensei, I'll mostly be in the village for the next couple of months. Feel free to come to me for any issue you might have. I promise to help you in any way I can, Minato said, especially to the Chunins before him. Meanwhile, Hiro was heartbroken, he is going to become a what? I thought that we would continue going on missions. While the Chunin was sulking, the team dispersed with Minato going to make a report on all the missions they took. I never knew for A rank missions one had to make a report to the Hokage personally. Well, that sucks for Minato then since it would be hours before he's done with the Hokage, Renjiro thought, relieved that he would soon be going to his home to rest when Sama approached him and asked, Renjiro, would you like to go and get a meal with me? Renjiro blinked in surprise. A meal? Right now? Sama nodded. Yes, I thought we could relax a bit. We've been on the move for days, and I think we deserve a little break. Alone? Renjiro asked and Sama couldn't help but pause and give him a confused look, why would we do that? Of course, Hiro can join us if he wants to. It's not like I had ulterior motives like a date or something, but her saying that was kind hush, she is only two years older than me after all. Renjiro thought as he considered the offer while Hiro agreed to it. Despite his mental fatigue, the idea of spending some time with Sama and Hiro was appealing. Besides, we've spent two weeks together what's more hours. Sure, why not? I could use a good meal. As the trio went on with their meal, Minato was just entering the Hokage's office. The Hokage, Hiruzen Sarutobi, looked up from his paperwork and smiled when he saw Minato. Ah, Minato. You have returned, Hiruzen said, setting aside his documents. Yes, Hokage-sama. We were fortunate to complete our missions ahead of schedule, Minato replied, bowing slightly. Excellent work as always, Minato, Hiruzen said, his tone warm. Now, tell me about the missions. As Minato drifted off into contemplation, he recounted the recent events to the Hokage and Narashiba, the current Jounin commander. So that's what happened, he concluded, pausing before he asked, do you think IWA and Suna will go to war? Hiruzen did not respond immediately, but Shiba spoke up. It is highly unlikely. Apart from a few skirmishes here and there between the two nations, things will not escalate to a full-scale war. But it will be a drag to take care of it. There he goes again, Hiruzen thought as he listened to his subordinate. Minato who looked confused asked, How? Shiba shrugged as he said, We are talking about two of the five major shinobi powers in the world. Though your squad did a good job setting events in motion, everything you did could still and probably will be traced back to Konoha. While I hate to admit it, both Saitetsu and Anoki are not idiots. Once everything cools down on their ends and their various intelligence sources get to work, this will be traced back to Konoha no matter how careful your squad thought it was. Minato and Hiruzen exchanged grim looks as Shiba continued, though there is still some respite in this. Hearing that, Minato's face lit up while Hiruzen's became visibly relaxed. And what is it? Hiruzen asked. We have time to remedy the situation. If what Yano and that Chunin, Renjiro, did was true, then things will not settle down for them if they directly interfered with the Earth Daimyo. It might even take IWA a whole year to find out who was really behind this. They might even know it as we speak, but the Daimyo would put a leash on Anoki's actions, which will give us time. Taking a sip of water, Hiruzen asked, then what do you propose we do? Shiba, deep in thought, responded, the best thing we can do now is to enter a treaty with one or even both of them. A treaty? Minato thought, visibly surprised. Weren't we supposed to keep them occupied so that they could leave us alone? Hiruzen, however, remained calm, having learned over the years to trust in Shiba's words and the sound logic behind his thinking. Why do you say so? Hiruzen asked, leaning closer to hear what the Jounin commander, who was standing next to Minato before him, was going to say. If we enter into a non-aggressive treaty with either Suna or IWA now before they have a chance to act against us, we will essentially be tying their hands, Shiba remarked. Hiruzen nodded as Minato asked, won't suggesting a treaty between us and them alarm them causing either of them to suspect us? This time it was not Shiba who answered but Hiruzen, who stared warmly at Minato and said, that's why we will leave this to the fire daimyo. If the daimyos agree and we enter into a treaty, then breaking the agreement will be hard for either party since the daimyos have good relationships between them, 
that is, in most cases. Minato nodded, though his brow furrowed. Still, I think we should prepare ourselves for whenever either IWA or Suna respond to this. Shiba nodded in agreement. I agree. If we choose a person to send who could quickly handle this matter earlier, things will be better for us. Who should I send then? Hiruzen asked. Before Shiba could respond, Minato interjected, you could send Sakumo-sama. Immediately, the atmosphere of the office changed. It became dark and tense as if the very air had been sliced by Minato's words. Minato thought, did I say something wrong? Minato, do not ever utter that name to me again, Hiruzen calmly said, his voice frightening in its own sense. A shiver passed through Minato as he wondered, I have never seen Lord Third like this. What might have happened? Sensing the need to shift the mood, Shiba said, don't worry, Sakumo just went through some complications on his last mission. Minato nodded, while Shiba continued, one of the Sanans would be better for this case since we do not know where Jiraiya is exactly, Orochimaru would be more suitable since he is always methodical in all his missions. Ah, this is going to be bothersome. Shiba thought. Still trying to change the subject, he said, you mentioned that you went with two other Chunins apart from Sama. How were they during the missions? I hope they did well. This was a normal procedure when Chunins accompanied Jounins on higher-ranked missions, enabling the village to identify talented shinobi among their ranks. While the mood did not suddenly improve, it got a bit better as Minato answered, yes, Renjiro and Hiro. They actually exceeded my expectations. Hiro showed talent and commitment, especially when we were alone in the land of wind. And Renjiro, while I knew he was talented in Fuenjutsu, his raw talent still managed to surprise me. He was even able to deal with two Jounins when we were dealing with the Iron Fang's mercenaries. While he says that his chains did most of the work, I still think that it is commendable. He can already go against Jounins and win? He is already that powerful? How he can't even be 12? Hiruzen thought, shocked. What chains are you talking about? The third Hokage could not help but ask. Minato had a contemplative look on his face as he answered, I mean the adamant in chains. Renjiro says that it is a chakra Senu he awakened from his Uzumaki side with the help of Kushina. Kushina is also involved? I need to talk to her about this, her residency is one of the few places in the village where my crystal ball cannot penetrate though. Those seals of hers are annoying. Hiruzen thought. Shiba immediately asked, are they similar to the Jinchurikis? Minato nodded. Yes, they are. Though he can't use them often since he says they take up too much chakra. Shiba did not say anything else but spared a glance at the Hokage. Receiving the knowing look from Shiba, Hiruzen understood exactly what the Jounin commander meant. The child is dangerous. Both Hiruzen were old enough to have witnessed the transfer of the nine-tailed beast, Karama, from its previous Jinchuriki, Lady Mido who recently died to Kushina. It was only thanks to Kushina's special ability that there were no issues in the transfer, and ever since things have been good for the village in general. Even when the village slipped up and the Jinchuriki was abducted, something that Hiruzen took full responsibility for and fully regrets, the Nine Tails did not go on a rampage. Kushina had it under control saving both her abductors and the team that rescued her from Kurama's wrath and destruction. So it was understandable if both Hiruzen and Shiba's thoughts veered into the Nine Tails when the Adamant and Chains were mentioned, he has a Sharingan and the Adamant and Chains? I am sure that Danza will want him to himself as soon as he hears about this, but I can't let that happen. I also need to be careful with this. If I don't handle things well and make a mistake along the way, we could basically have another Madara on our hands. He might even be more dangerous than Madara, especially if he awakens. Hiruzen could not afford to complete the thought without a cold shiver running down his spine. He seems to be really talented, Hiruzen began, nodding his head. When did he awaken the adamant in chains? Hiruzen inquired. I am not really sure, Minato said as he scratched his chin before continuing, when I last saw him when he was a genin, I don't think that he had them so it was probable after he became a chunin, but I might be wrong. Ah, that is good. Since you have spent time with him, do you think he is fit enough to be a jounin? Minato thought hard about the question, contemplating how best to present his assessment. Um, what should I say, he wondered. After a moment, 
he began, I am not really sure if I am in a position to give a perfect assessment of Renjiro, but from what I have seen whenever I interact with him, it is certainly promising. When it comes to strategy and power, Renjiro deserves to at least be an elite chunin since his sensory abilities are as good as mine. Hiruzen's eyes widened slightly in surprise. He is also a good sensor, he wondered. Shiba, on the other hand, thought, good, we need more skilled sensors in the village. But from how Minato is speaking, the boy definitely belongs on the battlefield. Minato continued, however, we all know that this is not enough for one to become a Jounin. Renjiro mentioned that he might soon take on a leadership role in the police force. Perhaps after that, he would truly show us that he is ready for promotion. The same case applies to Hiro. They are both talented shinobis and just need a bit of time to mature into great Juins. Minato took a breath before finally saying, but if Lord Third thinks that the village urgently needs Jounins, then both Renjiro and Hiro would be good additions. He finished with a curt smile. Why did he use so many words just to say it is up to us? Shiba thought, slightly amused. Hiruzen, on the other hand, had a light smile on his face as he said, Thank you, Minato. I guess that will be all for your mission report. Minato nodded and left the two men in the office. Once Minato had departed, Shiba shrugged as Hiruzen asked him, What do you think? Shiba took a moment before replying, If it were any other person, I would have told you to quickly promote them to the Jounin rank because we don't know when the next war will break out. Hiruzen nodded, considering Shiba's words. I do understand you, Shiba. If I were to be honest, I find the matter surrounding the boy complicated. It was already difficult with just his identity, especially when Daichi took him in, but now that he is showing exceptional talent, it will only become more complicated. I am also sure that Danza will come at me when he hears about this, and Daichi might mistake any of my decisions regarding the boy as an attempt to poach him. Even the boy himself might not be easy to handle, so I need to be careful about how I approach this, the Hokage thought. Shiba then said, we have been ignoring this for too long. It is better if we deal with it now. Speaking of dealing with things, I need you to sort out the situation in IWA and Suna. We also need to talk to the daimyo about the treaty, Hiruzen said. I knew I shouldn't have come here. I could have heard Minato's report from somewhere else. I just knew he would dump all of this on me. This is going to be a drag, Shiba bitterly lamented as he left the Hokage's office. Meanwhile, just as Minato had given his mission report, another shinobi was doing the same. Yano stood in the presence of his clan head and the head of the root, a middle-aged man in white and silver robes, Danzo Shimura. Danzo's piercing eyes scrutinized Yano as he reported on his mission. So, Yano, tell me everything that happened, Danzo commanded, his voice cold and authoritative. Yano began, recounting each detail meticulously. We successfully infiltrated both the land of wind and the land of earth as planned, he said. Danzo leaned forward, his eyes narrowing. So that is the reason why there have been strange movements, he interrupted. Danzo nodded to himself before continuing, do you have a reason why Asa was in the earth capital? He recently became an S-rank shinobi, so we need to start paying close attention to his movements. Yano shook his head. I'm certain that if we had more time in the earth capital, we would have found out. But when Minato arrived, the other team in the land of wind was in danger, so he had to get us out of there quickly. Danzo's eyes glinted with interest. So he is now able to teleport people over large distances, he inquired. Seeing Yano nod in confirmation, Danzo thought to himself, it seems like he has completely mastered Sensei's jutsu. Minato might become a threat in the future. He could even challenge Orochimaru for the Hokage seat. No, I must focus on the current situation. Yano continued with his report. When he mentioned that some members of the Iron Fang were still unaccounted for, Danzo's face darkened. I will commission a team to handle that. If we let them live, it might become a significant issue to solve in the future. Yano nodded and proceeded, after talking to the spies and retrieving the documents, we made our way back to the village. Danzo contemplated the implications. It seems Hiruzen is becoming bolder, but this is a good thing overall. Still, IWA and Suna are bound to respond. Should I use this to my advantage? I have to act carefully, or he might start looking into my dealings with Orochimaru. Danzo's mind churned with possibilities as he scrutinized Yano. 
Before I forget, you said you went with Chunins. Who were they? He inquired. Yano responded, they were Namike's Minato, Hataki Hiro, and Uzumaki Renjiro. Danzo's interest was piqued. Renjiro was there? Is Minato that close to him? Yano shook his head. They don't seem that close. I think it is the Jinchuriki who is connecting them. Danzo's thoughts raced. That makes sense since Hiruzen was trying to bring her and the boy closer. How was he? Did he show any talent? Danzo asked, referring to Renjiro. He was actually powerful for a Chunin, Yano replied. I was even going to recommend him for the route. Surprised by Yano's endorsement, Danzo asked, why do you say so? Yano said, I was impressed when I learned he was able to go against Jounin's and come out on top. But when I heard, and saw, that he has a similar chain ability as the Jinchuriki, then I was certain he would be good for the route. Danzo's mind was reeling. What? Not much could shock Danzo, but this certainly did. A Sharingan and Adamantin chains? If I could get my hands on him, he would be the perfect route member. And that concludes this episode. If you enjoyed it, I'd seriously love it if you guys could leave a like on the video as it genuinely helps out so much, and it keeps me going, plus it takes only one second. That said, have a wonderful day. See you in the next one.